Hello, Hello, welcome everyone. Good morning. So today we will be discussing about security operations center. So many of you might have heard about this term. So we will be looking in detail about what exactly is a security operation center. So in today's agenda, we'll be covering, I'll be introducing SOC to you. So we'll be discussing the purpose, uh, how many types of SOC are there? Then uh, what are the building blocks of a SOC? So we will be discussing about people, process and technology uh, involved for making a SOC. Then uh, uh, at the last, I'll be discussing in brief on national and state SOC. So uh, SOC uh, is basically a, a security unit inside an organization that deals with all of the security issues, cyber security issues. So uh, it is a 24 seven kind of a setup. Okay. So it looks like this. So we have video walls. We have analysts working, you know, round the clock. So for any big organization, having a lot of cyber, in, uh, a lot of infrastructure for, you know, computer tools. So they require, you know, uh, some defense mechanisms to safeguard their cyber infra. So a SOC is a centralized place where all of the, you know, security is handled. So we have all of the security devices in a SOC, like uh, we have, you know, we have IPS, we have IDS, we have antivirus server. So all of these devices, they are controlled in a SOC. Okay. So we have analysts monitoring around the clock. So mostly in, in, in most of the setups, the, uh, you know, uh, it is 24 seven kind of a setup, but it depends upon the organization, its scale, its priorities. It may be, you know, uh, eight to nine or maybe uh, 12 hour or maybe 24 hour. It depends, but mostly a SOC setup is of 24 hours. Okay. So basically a SOC consolidates under its umbrella. Uh, the entire functions of the incident life cycle. So starting from incident monitoring, detecting, responding. Okay. Then coordination management of organization security products. So there are a lot of security products. Like I told you, IDS, IPS, antivirus server, uh, there are firewalls. So all of these uh, management of these devices is handled by the SOC, the network devices, there are peripheral routers. So all of these devices, then end user devices, systems, uh, computer net network defense uh, tools, you know. So all of these tools for, you know, uh, employed for defending the cyber infra organization. So they are handled by the SOC. Okay. So a SOC is also uh, known by a nomenclature like security defense center, security analytics center, network security operation center, security intelligence center. Uh, threat Defense Center, Infrastructure Protection Center, or a Security Intelligence and Operation Center. So all of these nomenclature they are used for a similar kind of a setup. Okay, so this is how a SOC looks like generally. So analysts are working. So video walls are there. So they are monitoring round the clock about various on various devices on various tools they are working. Okay, so they basically are trying to find any intrusion. They want to safeguard the data of the organization so that there is no breach is occurring and the availability of system is there. Okay. So let's look at devices, which are all, you know, concerned in the SOC. So we have, you know, application server logs, mail servers logs. So firewalls, database servers, IPS, proxy, honeypot, uh, you know, capturing user activity, packet capture, VPN. So all of these uh, security related devices, so they are, you know, consolidated their management and control inside a SOC. Okay. So SOC basically, you know, monitors, it assesses and defends the cyber security infrastructure, cyber, uh, cyber infrastructure of an organization. So as you can see this uh, SIM, you, it is written there. So SIM is basically a tool. Uh, it's called a security information and event management. So SIM is basically heart of a SOC. So it's a tool wherein all of the uh, various devices logs are, you know, consolidated. The analysis and correlation takes place inside a SIM. Okay. So SOC has a lot of tools. SIM is the heart of the SOC. 
so all of these logs they are aggregated and correlated and in the end we have the out products of the software alerts reports and advisories so uh, for any breach or any suspicious activity is there so alerts are generated so reports are also created for any you know uh, incident effect if uh, if some incident has occurred so some reports are also created by the soft then there are advisories regular advisories are you know um, published by the soft okay some patch might be there some new vulnerabilities are there so all of these uh, functions they are handled by the SOC. So why do we need a SOC? So what's the basically purpose? So the first of all, we need to increase the detection ability. So we need to detect any cybersecurity incident occurring for the organization. Okay. If some uh, bad actor is trying to attack an organization, we need to, you know, we should have the capabilities of detecting it. Okay. So there is a report M trends report as we call it. So it's a report by FireEye. So it says that for 2020, the median dwell time is of 56 days. So median dwell time is basically it took average of 56 days for a breach to be detected. Okay. So you can you know see that for almost two months, the threat actor that was inside an organization network and the organization was not able to detect it okay so 56 days is the number in this fire 2020 report now this report in 2011 say, said that that this median dwell time was of 416 days so in you know 10 years back it took around 416 days for a breach to be detected okay once the threat actor is inside and once the the point we have detected that breach okay so this has you know reduced from that 416 level in last year in, in sorry 2019 it was around 78 days so it's still better 56 but 56 is still huge so a lot of havoc can be you know done by any threat actor if if uh, you know he or she is present inside the organization network for about 56 days okay so this is just an average so in some cases it it is very, very huge it is it might be in years and in some cases it might be in days also okay so second uh, purpose for the SOC is you know we need to increase the responding capability so we don't want the you know adversary to succeed so if any cyber security incident is happening we have detected it we need to respond to it okay we should not allow that bad actor to you know uh you know for breach to occur or maybe to availability to go down okay so all of the you know pillars of cyber security should remain cia confidentiality integrity and availability should stay okay so we need to respond to these uh, incident and for that we need a SOC. then third uh, is the reducing of service disruption from security issues so you must have heard about ddos attacks so distributed denial of service attacks Basically, a threat actor, uh, you know, or any bad actor want to, you know, um, you know, attack an organization by making its website unavailable for the genuine users. So a DDoS attack, if at all has occurred on an organization, so we need to, you know, reduce the impact of it. Okay. We need to reduce the service disruption time. So SOC comes there. The SOC is responsible for reducing these disruptions so for taking back the system online okay so this is also a task for us all then we need to you know reduce the impact of a security compromise now let's assume that if security compromise has occurred okay now uh, we need to reduce impact so there's a poneman institute so poneman institute along with ibm estimated that for 2020 the estimated data breach cost is about 3.86 million dollars so this amount is huge for any organization if you know they say that on an average if the breach has occurred for an organization this much amount is the cost for that breach okay so we want to reduce that you know impact because this is a huge amount for any organization so its reputation loss also is there so we need to you know reduce its impact so SOC uh, has this uh, you know responsibility so it uh, you know want to reduce that impact from a security compromise 
then we need to enhance the correlation potential. Now, suppose there is some IP, uh, bad IP, it is trying to scan an organization network, okay? So, if that IP is trying to scan, suppose all of the, you know, say 100 IPs of the organization, it has it has scanned them about 1000 times in a, in, a, in a day. Okay, now the tools detect that, okay, some scanning is happening by this IP, with this particular IP. And that IP is also involved, you know, in some, in some APT campaigns or something. Okay, so we have two different information. Now we need to correlate this information. Okay, so if uh, if at all uh, different departments are handling some different tools. Okay, now this uh, this IP is having a lot of potential to impact the organization. Okay. Now we need correlation so that we can better, you know, judge this. Okay. So if at all some, uh, you know, all the units are working differently, we will not have that much of uh, correlation, but for a soft, it is, it is a centralized unit. So it enhances the correlation potential. Okay. So basically we can identify if some IP is, you know, uh, trying, you know, for scanning also, and it is involved in some other IP. Uh, in some other, you know, campaign also, then this impact is huge. Okay, we need to block that IP or any other action that might be, you know, part of the standard operating procedure that will be followed. So SOC's responsibility is for the correlation. Then in the last, so it allows for the, uh, you know, coordination around the central security management. So where there are various uh, stakeholders involved in an organization. So coordination among them, uh, that is happened under the uh, this uh, occurs under the SOC. Okay, so these are basically the purpose we require a SOC for. Then we come on to the topic of types of SOC. So basically, there are uh, two types. So we once uh, first option we can outsource the SOC. Uh, the other one is we can have an in-house SOC, and there is a hybrid also. So we'll be discussing all of these uh, three. You can say okay. So in outsourcing of the SOC, so what we do here is we leverage the MSSP. So MSSP is a managed uh, security service provider. So basically we are outsourcing our SOC setup to a third party entity, some security organization. So which is, you know, ex which is having expertise in setting up of a SOC. Okay. So here they bring in the, you know, um, skilled staff. They know the, they have the expertise, they know, bring the, they bring in the knowledge. Okay. So here the initial setup is, you know, uh, very, uh, you know, very less uh, capex is required. So we do not have, you know, a lot of uh, buying of, you know, devices and uh, manpower at the first. Okay. So here the operational expenses are more than the capital expenditure required at the beginning. Now challenges here face are that there are no dedicated analysts of the organization. So a lot of, you know, um, priorities of the business, the business concerns, infrastructure, they are better known by the organization staff than compared to the outside vendor. Okay. So a lot of, you know, coordination is required with the MSSP. So it takes time. Okay. So these are basically the challenges phase in the uh outsource one so another one is that the data is stored and processed outside so in some cases it is there but in some cases due to regulatory requirements so data can be processed inside also so it's a uh, you know that thing then we have an in-house shop okay so we in in-house shop what is it, it's uh, uh, the staff is you know from the organization itself so they have a better understanding of the business concern of the infrastructure. Okay. So data is processed inside. It's stored and processed inside only inside the organization. And uh, the, you know, there is a greater control over the security and compliance. Okay. So challenges here are that we need to have an initial huge cost. So a lot of CapEx is required. So we need to recruit new people. We need to train our staff. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of cost involved in there. And the third and most important challenge here is that the SOC maturity comes at a very gradual speed. Okay. So there is a, initially people are new, they do not know much. So even if they are trained, so they are not having experience in running a SOC. Okay. 
so it takes a lot of time for that soft to get a mature level okay then the third option is of a hybrid setup so hybrid soft involves you know involving both of these outsource and in house so for an organization it can have a variety of these two socks okay well, a mixture of these two so it it basically leverages both the in house and the outsource good points okay so it may be uh, involved that half of the analysts from the organization half are from the mssp side okay so they are you know uh, you know built like a team okay so there is a you know gradual uh, skill increasing of the staff and you know second opinion and backup is also available from the mssp side so depending upon the organization it can go for any of the setups then there are building blocks so next offering is building blocks of a soft so we will be discussing what people process and technology so people so there are a lot of staff uh, there are a lot of roles inside a soft okay we'll be discussing one by one so first and foremost are the analysts incident responders as we call them so they are basically the people working around the clock the 24/7 you know uh, available inside a soft they do the real time monitoring they do the triaging okay so they have the incident analysis coordination responding forensic and malware analysis all of these tasks are done by the analyst and the incident spotter so they are the main people of the soft they are working around the clock okay so they uh, you know uh, browse the tools they do the analysis they do the monitoring so these are the primary people involved okay then there is a task of a trending and intel so there are a lot of you know cyber attacks going on inside the world so there are not of new vulnerabilities also coming up okay so they are also attacked so there is a term called a cyber threat intelligence now this is a task of you know uh, cyber threat intelligence needs to be gathered from around the world okay so there are uh, vendors also available that provide this uh, cyber threat intelligence okay so we need dedicated staff for you know performing the cyber threat intelligence so they uh, collect cyber news they do the analysis so they do the distribution task also and also they create some trends out of it okay so cyber and intel uh, trending and intel is another type of you know resources that are required in a soft for gathering the cyber threat intelligence then third are the soc system admins so there are a lot of sensors there are a lot of tools inside a soc okay so we need to tune them we need to maintain them okay so we need system administrators for them okay so there are uh, you know tasks for a custom signature creation custom profile generation so all of these tasks are done by the system admins okay so there are a lot of tools and we require a lot of system administrators for them then there is a soft engineering team so soft engineering is pretty basically tools engineering and you know deployment team so a lot of new tools are coming up always in the market so some pocs are done for these tools whether they will be you know helpful in the setup or not so this soft engineering team they do the stars they, they study new tools they deploy these tools they do the scripting and automation kind of a thing okay and then ultimately there is a soc manager so soc manager is basically responsible and handling all of these tasks so he is the head of the soc okay then there is another classification for security uh, you know people that is the rainbow teams as we call it so there is a red team there is a blue team there is a yellow team so red team you must have heard so they are the people involved in offensive setup okay so they try and attack an organization okay so they are basically ethical hackers you can say so they try and attack the organization to find any vulnerabilities if at all they are there okay so they do the penetration testing so they basically do these things so that the organization knows beforehand that okay these are the vulnerabilities these could be used by the attackers to exploit them okay so they do the social engineering so they try and create some you know phishing mail to test the employees of the organization whether they are you know trained enough to gauge okay this is a phishing mail and this is a genuine mail so these red team is the offensive team okay they try and attack then there is a blue team so blue team is the defensive team they try to you know save 
so they are the infrastructure protection people okay they respond to incident so after the incident has occurred or before it is occurring but on the defensive side so blue team comes in control okay they do the threat hunting they do damage control so threat hunting we will be discussing in detail okay then there is a yellow team yellow team are basically the SOC engineering and the tool system admins as we call them so they are the software builders they are the system administrators developers team so these are the three types of teams you know of a cyber security setup in a SOC you can say then this is a sample life cycle of an incident response okay so i'll be just discussing this briefly so we have a lot of it assets in an organization okay so they collect so they are basically generating logs okay so these all security related events they are pushed inside a sim okay so then there is a threat intelligence team that is working so they push these threat intelligence through various uh, tools like a sim tuner or something so they do the threat intelligence and that information is posed into into a sim okay then there are constituents so they generate some incident report okay so some incident let's say that has occurred so there is an incident report for that for that alert now this is also uh, you know historical data is pushed into a, into a sim okay now we have the current real time logs we have current new cyber threat intelligence and we have the historical data so all of these three things that are they are pushed into a sim okay now sim uh, a real time monitoring you know is happening in the sim there is a correlation there is a free from query there are visualization so all of these tasks are handled by the sim okay now the tier 1 analyst they work in they work on the sim they do the you know incident monitoring and all so all of these things combined are you know done in a sim then the tier one analyst if uh, handles most of the incidents if at all required he can escalate it to a tier two analyst okay so there are tier two analysts also present so they perform some in-depth analysis they may they might some you know do some traffic capture they do the you know malware sampling as well so there are tier two analysts working so they are there for some you know important cases then they also might consult and coordinate with the system and uh, you know uh, system administrator so any you know fine tuning is required in the tools because an incident has occurred and ultimately they tell okay what needs to be done we need to block it we need to deactivate some accounts we need to you know continue watching or any other thing so this is basically a sample incident you know life cycle uh, how a SOC handles it okay so this is an incident response life cycle then uh, there's a term called as threat hunting so threat hunting you know is the practice of proactively searching for cyber threats okay. you know already inside you know that are uh, attacks that are already inside a network okay threat hunting works with the assumption that we are already compromised okay and then we are finding what compromise has been occurred so we assume that the cyber defense tools have been breached the bad actor is inside an organization so threat hunters are basically experienced SOC analysts so they know uh they know their tools they know their logs so they basically do the you know uh, threat hunting as in they find okay this breach has already occurred how can we find it so threat hunting is that thing okay so uh, threat hunting uh, uh basically digs deep to find malicious actors in the environment that have you know slipped by our initial endpoint security defenses so there is a cyber kill chain process you can see there are seven steps in the cyber kill chain process okay so first step is a reconnaissance so threat hunting uh, uses sometimes this cyber kill chain process so this is basically a hack life cycle okay i'll just give a brief about it so first step in the, any hack is a reconnaissance so reconnaissance involves scanning so you know the bad actor might you know first want to scan an entire network okay what all uh, uh, you know uh, network devices are there what all devices are there which all you know 
versions the so the tools and the hardware is running okay so first step is a reconnaissance then second step is weaponizing now that bad actor after studying the network he might create a new document okay which is full of uh, malware so he has studied okay which vulnerability will work on this kind of a setup he creates a new document the third step is a delivery now after studying it and creating a new document the bad actor might send a phishing email or a spear phishing mail so spear phishing mail is a you know very highly targeted mail so it has some you know information about the user who is reading it and what information is you know of its of his context okay so that is a spear phishing so that attachment of a malware is delivered okay till this stage the attack has not occurred only that bad actor is trying okay now when the user by mistake or unintentionally clicks on that attachment and the malware is executed so this is the fourth stage that is the exploit okay so the phishing attachment has been clicked upon and the malware is executed so that is the fourth stage now in the fifth stage so that uh, malware might want to download some additional malware okay so that was just a payload uh, and it might want to download some more malware okay then in the sixth state that is called an execute so execute involves a little movement of the bad actor or he might want to exfiltrate some data then the last stage is the maintain he might want to you know maintain a hidden backdoor there so that he can return back and do some more damage to the organization so this is a cyber kill chain process so that is used in for a threat hunting also then uh, we have discussed the people now we are coming on to a process so process is uh, basically sop so we need a standard operating procedure for all of the you know uh, soc activities whether it be a business process a technology process operational process or an analytical process so basically for an event or alert if I, if it will occur so we should be prepared and we should know the steps that are to be taken okay what are the escalation procedures what are the reporting procedures what are the breach response procedures so all of these procedures or as standard operating procedures as we call them sops so they should be created beforehand and they should be updated also uh, you know some you know suppose some incident has occurred and it might require to you know update our process okay so that should also be done regularly okay so technology process might involve that suppose there is a new uh, user and we need to provide a system for it so what all process needs to be done uh for that user to be given you know uh, that machine so what all processes are to be you know hardened machine should be hardened or uh what all antivirus server and any 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 type of thing that are to be done before the user is given the machine so that might include in the technology processes then there are analytical process suppose there's a ddos that has occurred now we are you know analyzing it okay what is the scale of that ddos so how are we doing the analytics or how are we analyzing so that should be laid okay so these are the threshold so let's say if an attack is of less than one gbp it's a small ddos if it's more than say one to five it's a medium level and it's above five gbp then it's a high level ddos attack so these are some processes that are you know defined already for the analyst to be you know um, helping him in, in in the investigation processes okay then the third pillar is of the technology okay so these are all the tools that are you know um, uh, employed in a sop so we'll go through them one by one so there's a firewall ids ips anti spyware all of these tools are there so i'll give you a brief about them so firewall is basically uh, you know unwanted uh, stopping of unwanted connections okay uh, so we do not want any let's say we have only whitelisted some ips and we don't want some we don't want other ips to communicate so we can block them at the firewall then there is ids ips so ids is intrusion detection system and ips is intrusion prevention system so as the name suggests so one basically detect intrusion and one has the capability of preventing it also 
Then there is anti spyware. So anti spyware is an anti antivirus server, as we call antivirus, as we know. So anti spyware servers are there. So they you know provide updates to the end users end machines. Okay. Then there is a rogue host detection. So rogue host detection is a you know uh, software that basically scans the routers and subnets to detect any new system or a device that is found connected to a network let's I, I let me let me give an example suppose there is a big bank uh public sector bank okay there's a branch of that bank now uh, there is a branch server inside that uh, branch okay branch server is there now the organization uh network is comprising of the branch server and eight more machines now this is information that is already known to everyone now unintentionally or intentionally some employee connects his mobile device to the uh, machine okay or some wi-fi router is connected to the server now this rogue host detection that will detect this type of uh, activity is there okay so it periodically is scanning the network for any new device and if any it's connected and is against the policy of the organization so it might be uh, you know detected that okay some new devices connected then there is a policy auditor so policy auditor is a you know it assessment tool uh, used in security audits then there is asset management so asset management is we should you know know about what all assets are there in an organization okay we should have an inventory list okay so if any device is missing or you know new addition is there we should know about it okay then there is remote forensics so for any organization SOC is at a one place and uh, they want to investigate some you know system at a very remote place so the analyst might want to you know do some forensics he might want to do some investigation he might want to capture some traffic or uh, you know or maybe study the device or do some analysis so that is part of a remote forensics then there is application whitelisting so this involves that only some websites are only you know allowed for browsing for an organization network okay allowing only some sites and maybe blocking some let's say social media or something so that is called the application whitelisting then there is patch management so there are a lot of patch uh, updates that are there for the tools and devices okay so we need to regularly update them we need to patch them so that is part of a patch management then there is baseline monitoring so baseline monitoring basically involves that there is a organization network suppose uh, there is a railway organization some we are uh, suppose we are discussing about ircpc now we have the you know 11 o'clock there's a tatkal time so we know that at that time the organization traffic increases now baseline involves that we have studied the organization you know network traffic for a lot of time we know the regular behavior we have created the baseline now if any ddos or some attacks is there so you know it is above that baseline or it is you know breaching that baseline okay it has exceeded a lot of you know uh, volume of data so baseline helps in these kind of scenarios where we are we want to know what's the regular traffic and what is you know a change to that traffic. then there is data loss prevention and dlp as we call it so dlps are basically employed at the end user device so that organization sensitive data is not lost lost okay then there is sim sim is security information and event management i'll be discussing sim in brief then these are other you know technology tools that are there packet capture next gen firewall so firewall and having some more capabilities so next gen firewall is there okay then uh, it combines the uh, you know capabilities of a uh, ids ip is also this next gen firewall so time is less so i'll be discussing uh, sim okay the so sim is security information and event management so i have discussed this term a lot so i'll be just giving you a brief now what basically sim is sim supports threat detection and security incident response through real time collection and historical analysis so real time collection we are having you know real time logs of the security devices and other devices that are you know continuously being pushed into the sim 
then we have historical analysis so we know a lot of incident that have already occurred in the you know uh, before today okay so that analysis is also present so all of these real time and historical analysis of security events from a wide variety of you know event and contextual data sources okay so this is basically sim okay so it you know continuously monitors these logs they you know it tries to find any you know uh, any uh, mismatch or you know it's not according to rules so there are rules inside a sim okay so if any rule is triggered okay so it uh, creates an alert now this is uh, as you can see in this diagram you can see so these are the data sources for us in okay so there are firewalls there are routers ids ips vulnerability scanners content detonation antivirus server critical application access control so all these data sources they continuously generate logs okay so these logs are pushed into a sim okay so sim analyzes these logs uh, let me give you an example so examples are there so there is a sim rule okay let's say the rule is uh, see this trigger okay so if there are three or more failed attempts failed login attempts in a minute from a single host okay so this uh, you know logs will be generated by the ad server okay by the device now what it basically means that some other user is trying to log in to you know uh, his not uh, not on his machine okay there are three or more failed attempts in a in one minute okay so this might be a brute force attack okay so these are types of the rules that are created inside a sim okay so the sim uh, you know monitors these logs it has the rules created inside it so it basically uh, you know analyzes these logs and if any rule is triggered so it creates an alert for the analyst to view it so analyst will now investigate deeper that okay if it was a false positive or a, you know genuinely genuinely a breach has occurred so sim basically some people confuse it with the centralized log collection no centralized log collection is just a part of a sim okay there are various other tasks so sims output are including alert feed it has visualization trend analysis detailed reporting cyber intel fusion forensic security status so all of these are the output of a sim okay so it basically ingests log it ingests cyber threat intelligence it has the historical analysis it processes all of these information and creates an output okay so there are log enrichment also happening like a hues or a asn information that is also present from the uh, internet okay then we can also have a ticket or case management so suppose we want a ticket management you know thing to be there for all of the alerts so sim can do that then integration of ioc from threat intelligence fields okay so this integration can also be done inside a sim so these are some rules i give you i'll give you another example suppose let's look at the second trigger so alert on 15 or more firewall drop reject drop events from a single ip in one minute so a firewall generates a log that okay 15 events are there for a single ip trying to you know uh, come inside the networks and there is a drop event so this is a warning for a scam okay or a warm propagation so this firewall rule or this same rule of a repeat attack at the firewall it is triggered on these events okay so these are some sample rules that are created inside a sim then there is a new uh, term uh, new tool that is there inside uh, in, the, in the market that is called a source so security of orchestration automation and response so it basically you know uh, is a automation uh, you know uh, in, it helps in automation so basically i'll give an example Suppose there is an IP that is trying to scan a network, okay? So it has scanned, say, let's say 100 times in a minute. Now what happens is that this creates a rule, uh, that create, this creates a trigger inside a SIM and it creates a alert. Now the cyber analyst, uh, so the analyst working inside the SOC, it uh, views this alert. 
now what he basically want to do is he wants to block the ip at the firewall end so he will generate a request to the system admin that okay this ip should be blocked now this complete life cycle okay right from the alert triggering to the uh, you know blocking of the ip is a manual process so these this, you know standard uh, attacks which are uh, standard alerts which are there so they can be automated so soar helps in you know doing that so it and, and uh, you know increases the analyst productivity it has faster response time so soar basically will involve that if this sim alert is there we need to block that ip at the firewall so automatically the machine does all of these tasks in less than a same minute so the analyst can now you know focus on more important alerts okay he can you know less concerned about the smaller alerts okay so so is that tool so it has the three capabilities of threat and vulnerability management that is orchestration security operations automation and security incident response so it can basically orchestrate and you know respond to automatically to cyber security events then we have a national and state sock okay so i'll give an example that this is a ap sock you can see so it was set up in 2018 it works on the lines of indian computer emergency response team only okay so it uh, extends cyber security cover to the all state government owned entities okay so it works on the lines of uh, icert only so national and state sock uh, they you know coordin uh, they facilitate coordination between multiple stakeholders and subordinate distinct socks okay they basically do not have visibility till the end device of an organization they might have the visibility till the organization edge firewall okay they are not concerned about the organization internals they just want that in uh, internet traffic internet based attack should not occur on an organization okay they provide a better threat feed to these uh, you know uh, its member socks okay and it also coordinates with other national socks so this is basically security operation center so any question is there so i'll like to take up So, if any question is there uh, regarding security operation center, can you suggest some uh, open source solutions uh, to be useful? Uh, there are open source solutions, but uh, they are not, you know, uh, suggested because uh, you know buying a software and you know getting uh, support from the vendor is very much required for a SOC. Okay. So going for open source is, uh, you know, um, there are a lot of tools, but <laughs> we basically do not use any. So I will not be able to comment on any tool. You are, you are not recommending any open source one? Uh, no, personally, I will not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone has any other question? I think some uh, people can write in chat box as well. Yeah. Okay. Anupam, I think you can take over. Okay, sir. Uh, I thank Pankaj uh, for a very interesting overview of uh, security operation centers. And uh, we came to, came to know a lot of things, how SIEM works, what is sure and all. Uh, that's a yes. very interesting thing. A lot of us has uh, very less information regarding security operations, how it works. Thank you, Pankaj, for his session. Thank you, sir. Session.